Hi guys, this is about CA final advanced auditing November 2022 paper analysis or even you can say suggested answers. I'm going to show you what answer you have to write. And first of all, kindly excuse me for releasing this video very late, almost a month gap after the exams. I thought of doing this immediately after all the exams were over and I did for CA intro and I have gone through this paper and because of some emergency work I left and I was thinking that it is already completed. Like I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't remember that uh, I have not done this. Okay. Um, but uh, suddenly some students are asking again, where is the video? I said them it is there in the YouTube and they searched and get, came back to me and they're asking, sir, it is not there in the YouTube. Then I searched and then I realized that I didn't do. I just created folder, thumbnail, everything, but I didn't do the video. Kindly excuse me for the delay. Fine. Now, <clears throat> like many after the exam is over, um, many were saying that the paper is easy. Oh, is that is the paper really easy or is it difficult or medium? I am going to give you my analysis. Actually, my conclusion on this paper is actually medium. First of all, understand I do not have access to MCQ questions. Obviously, getting it. So MCQ questions, I don't have any idea. And people said it is moderate. It's good. People can score at least, you know, for sure 18 plus or 20 plus. Some people are saying. So assuming that MCQs are moderate and this paper is also moderate as a whole. Uh, the paper is moderate where a student can easily score 50 plus for sure with not much efforts in preparation but there are some questions where student accidentally may write some wrong answers you know in this in this paper there are many questions which are tricky which will confuse you which will prompt you to write some other answer you know other than what is you know like uh, targeted now uh, suppose you see question number 1a now one excellent question, very tough question. You know, for this question, the answer is there in three standards. The answer, similar answer is there in three standards. In quality control standard, in ICA pronouncement, the answer is there. You can also call this as pronouncement related, uh, you know, it's a, it's a direct question asked from pronouncement actually. Or a similar answer is there in 240, a similar answer is there in 705. Like in pronouncement, first of all, let's read the question. So what are they asking here? AP and Associates or Stat Auditors of XP Limited for four years. In the past, past four years, they are engaged in manufacturing and marketing of FMCG goods. So these are the auditors from the past four years. During this current year, the company has diversified and commenced providing software solutions in the area of e-commerce in India as well as in certain European countries. AP and Associates while carrying out the audit of the current year, came to know that the company has expanded its operations into new segment as well as new geography. AP and associate does not possess necessary expertise and infrastructure to carry out the audit. From the past four years, we are doing the audit, but now we are unable to do the audit. Now, here, you should, you should filter out which standard is applicable. Now, I'll tell you, in SA 240, there is one, one uh, you know, uh, one, 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 one point is available. If auditor encounters an exceptional circumstance where he is unable to continue the engagement, then below there are some 3-4 points. That answer you have to write. Like auditor has to communicate with the management, check legal professional responsibilities. If legal response, I mean, if, if as per the law regulation applicable, if the withdrawal is permitted, then withdraw and communicate to those so-and-so people and file a form with you know, ROC under ADT 3 form company law. So this is one answer if auditor encounters an exceptional circumstance. That is for SA 240. They didn't use that word here. Then SA 705. If auditor is unable to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. Okay. And um, he's, he decided that he cannot or it, it, it results in disclaimer of opinion, expression of disclaimer of opinion. Then same three points applicable. Okay. First. Withdraw from the engagement if withdrawal is permitted and communicate to corresponding parties like management, those charged with governance and file a form, all that. If withdrawal from engagement is not possible, then disclaimer. But here they are not asking, they are not talking about inability to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. They are talking about like from the past four years, auditor has conducting the audit. Now the company has entered into a new line of business, which the auditors are not aware of. What should be the process? The answer was given in standard on quality control. I'll straight away show you in the pronouncement. Like, just a minute. So in the pronouncements, it was there. 
in the pronouncement it is given uh, the page number in pronouncement is 37 yes here you see here this is this is pronouncement and by the way i'm i'm showing the content below standard on quality control you see here exact line has been framed as a question i think this question might be there in very old rtp getting it somewhere before 2018 rtp it might be there okay i have i don't have the rtp date of 2017 and 16 right now getting it it might be there in old rtp that question might have been asked uh, that's why that's why I couldn't find them in RTP and MTP. So directly open the ICF pronouncement. I found the answer. Getting it. Uh, actually, if you recollect, like if you recollect SA 240 or SA 705, even maybe 240 is there at CA into final students mainly may not be focusing 240, but 705 everybody will focus. Inability to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. What procedure auditor will follow? The same procedure if you write here, that then also you'll get full marks. Getting it. Now SQC, you see here. The question which is asked is here. Like some questions, institute is asking from pronouncement. Some questions. I'll tell you why this mistake is happening. Um, see, earlier, uh, the institute, whoever is setting up the paper, he will be having access to all the RTPs or he might be having access to a big question bank which ICA gives. I, I'm not sure exactly. Okay. So he will question. Once upon a time, Whatever this question content is there, right? This might have been there in the main material of the ICA once upon a time. But now that content is removed in the main material and, and only there in the pronouncement. Forgetting this fact, still the paper setters are testing this. Suppose if a student who studied main ICA material thoroughly, 100%, ignoring pronouncement, obviously pronouncements nobody can study. This question he cannot write exactly. Getting it. But anyhow, you see here, whether to continue a client relationship includes consideration of significant. By the way, I will show you the reference in my material also for this. In the material which I gave to our registered students also, I will show. But first look at this. Deciding whether to continue a client relationship include consideration of significant matters that have arisen in past and their implication. For example, a client may have started to expand the business operation into an area where firm did not have enough knowledge and expertise on this point. Suppose, where the firm obtains information that would have caused it to decline an engagement if that information is available earlier. Policies and procedures. What is the procedure for withdrawal? Discuss with appropriate level of management. If the firm determines it is proper to withdraw, discuss with management and withdraw from engagement. And uh, see whether there is a regulatory professional responsibility so that you have to communicate uh, before withdrawal, like communicating to ROC, communicate, uh, filing ADT1, company law answer, all that. By the way, here one small law. Uh, and finally, you have to document the significant issues. Actually, this is the answer which they asked. These are the points you have to write. These are the points. And you need to write this point also. Most importantly, your answer should start with this. In fact, if you write this 34th bold point, bold, whatever is given here in bold, if you write this point, then, then that is more than enough. If, if auditor, if the firm has obtained information that would have caused the firm to decline the audit engagement, if that information is available before accepting, then you see, uh, look at the responsibility, whether the firm has to report to the persons and possibility of withdrawing, whether withdrawal is permitted or not. If withdrawal is not permitted, then it's again a different issue. You have to give modified opinion, whatever. Okay. Now, that, that point is there even in the material which we used in the classroom for our purpose. I'll show you. <clears throat> See here. Acceptance and continuance of client relationship. Here you see very clearly we have covered if, if engagement partner obtains information that would have caused the firm to decline the audit engagement had that information available earlier the partner shall communicate to the firm so that the firm can take necessary actions now what necessary actions there you have to write two points those two points were given in the pronouncement book what are the actions look at the professional legal responsibilities including whether the firm has to report to the management regulatory authorities 
yes because in the given in, in the given question they are the auditors of a company it's a public limited company it's a company so auditor has responsibility to comply with company law for resignation here some students whoever whoever have interacted with me they wrote resignation of auditor answer company audit directly that answer is correct but it's not complete answer that is only one part of the answer which will have one or two marks weightage out of five maybe one mark only not even five only one mark it will have weightage remaining three to four marks will be there if if you write this answer out of which this answer has been given in our material in our material clearly okay and necessary action means what you need to explain uh, uh, like what is the legal professional responsibility uh, to whom you have to communicate if withdrawal is permitted withdraw from the engagement and communicate with corresponding parties if withdrawal is not possible if withdrawal is not permitted under the law then you have to give a modified opinion where withdrawal is not permitted under law of course that is not required in this answer where withdrawal is not permitted heavy lod regulations when i'm doing audit of a listed entity if i want to withdraw the engagement in between it's not possible there is a logic no 45 days before 45 days after 45 days i need to give limited review report if i give three three quarters review, review report then i must give fourth quarter review report like this you have you know a logic and an answer right so uh, that one that's it so it's actually clearly an sqc question it's a standard on quality control question straight away which is asked from pronouncement i am talking based on the current version of ICA material it might be there in the question banks it might be there in the past rtp mtp all that but tell me which student will sit and study past 10 rtps which student will sit and study part, pa, pa, past 10 mgps obviously correct so considering that i am classifying this question as very tough question you know in this paper very tough questions are roughly 25 questions roughly 25 questions please watch till the end of the video you will understand how institute is changing dynamics in the paper okay. and according to me in this medium medium it's not difficult it's not easy it's medium it's nine marks only easy questions of 54 54 means like easy means strike questions no crux um no complications in that no tricky no tricks in that and remember first question is a compulsory question compulsory means for this you don't have choice you can't take this as choice that's it next second one it's a may 2018 rtp question straight question you will not find this anywhere in the ic material it's a may 2018 rtp straight question this here here the person has sent a negative confirmation request to various trade payables okay or uh, trade payables only and one of the trade payable having 20 lakhs outstanding balance did not reply what do you mean by non-response in case of negative confirmation request is what they asked and you see here you will find the same question in uh, may 2018 rtp may 2018 rtp this is the question which exactly they asked so only those students who write the answer given in may 2018 will get the marks otherwise you'll not be getting any sort of the mark if you write your own answer and for me, these two questions, I felt very bit advanced getting it because only a student who have studied very old RTPs also can only write. Now here, many students now, now whoever is watching this video, you might get some doubt, sir, which means now should we watch all the 10 attempts, 15 attempts RTPs? I say no. Just because one question will come from one of the RTP, don't take up that burden of reading that entire RTP because RTP will have always unusual questions. In RTP, you will find questions in such a way that they are not there in the ICS study material at all. You will find a different answer completely, outrightly. The questioning itself is different completely. So no need. If you read past five RTPs, that is enough. Past five or six RTPs. Suppose you are planning for May 2023. November 22 RTP, May 22 RTP, November 21, May 21. November 19, May 19, six RTPs. If these six RTPs, if you read, that's enough. Because these six RTPs will be definitely based upon the latest version of the ICA material. Because RTPs generally will be developed based on the previous version of the ICA material. So in the past six RTPs, in the past three years, CA final audit material has not been changed so much. So these six RTPs, enough. Exceptional situations will be there. It's okay, let it be 10 marks. As long as in audit, descript to paper, you're able to attempt 55 plus marks. That's more than enough. And by the way, one more thing, I always, uh, you know, day before exam study, I used to give, I used to select some six to seven chapters and classify them as second category chapter. In this exam, 
from second category chapter, the questions hardly came 25 marks. Maybe in MCQ, some 5 marks might have been there, totally 30. So still the student can attempt out of 120, 30, if you, you know, 90 marks student can attempt if the student prepares first category chapters. Especially if you are my student, if you are, if you are our regular student, if at all, whatever I say first category, if you stick to that first category, I'm telling you, you will definitely attempt for more than 75, 80 marks for sure. Even if you are a smart course student, you will be definitely able to attempt 70 or 80 marks easily. Next. So these two questions are a bit tough. Okay. Next one, it's a, it's about uh, whether tax audit report can be revised or not. So that question straight away, it's a straight question, not a very big challenging question. Next, this is again, this I covered in the video, SA 320 question. If you recollect, especially our students, we discussed this SA 320 directly from pronouncement. I'll tell you here few issues. See, ICI says, for these standards, SQC, SA 220, SA 330, SA 450, SA 540, for these standards, okay, ICI directly asking students to refer, ICI is asking students to refer directly pronouncement book pronouncement book for all this we have focused on pronouncement book even 220 and sqc we developed based on pronouncement that's why you will find questions like first question you found it in our material that's why the main point you found in our material okay now so this we have discussed in pronouncements earlier like i'll show you so what they're asking first one uh, here there are two questions Guide the auditor with respect to factors which may affect identification of benchmark. What are the factors affecting the benchmark? Selection of benchmark. Then, what benchmark should be adopted? Like in case of a company engaged in manufacturing and sale of air conditioner and having regular profits, then profit before tax is the right benchmark. If it is a construction, construction related project and having losses, then PBD may not be suitable. Turnover is suitable. Turnover is an alternative benchmark. That's it. Now here I have, I, I'll show you straight away that how we have explained that in the class. Just a minute. We have clearly covered these points in the class SA320. Those of our regular students who watched SA320, you can easily definitely answer. I told all of you to read from the um, Just a minute, I'm opening that video straight away. Like, so the standard, the standard is SA 320. I'll, I'll directly scroll the video to there because this is the video which we give to our CA final students for SA 320 purpose because we directly discussed it from pronouncement book. What exactly they asked, I'll show you. So what is we discuss specifically this in the is classroom. By auditor at less audit procedure, further audit procedure. Who are the owners? You see here. Like what is the ownership structure? What are the factors that affect the auditor? So this question we clearly discussed. We even marked it as important question in the standard. Okay. So what are the factors that affect benchmark selection? Three points you have to write on this, three marks. Oh, and they even asked the next point as a practical question. Mark. I'll show you. Nothing but benchmark. So, what example you have to use? You see here, here, the total revenue, gross profit, expenses, profit before tax can be used as a benchmark when the profits, you know, if, if they are not volatile, actually, uh, you see here, examples of benchmark, profit before tax, total revenue, total expense, all that. Profit before tax can be used as often used as proper benchmark. However, if PBT is not stable, then turnover, gross profit, something else can be taken as benchmark. Exactly that question only asked. Exactly. Those of you who have seen this standard class, SA320 pro, properly, only then you'll be able to write. If at all you didn't go, you, if at all you have not gone through this video, SA320, if any of you have not read from ICS study material, or if you, if you have, if you have, you know, 
this entire whatever i showed in the video is covered in ca inter also in ca inter there is a chapter called audit strategy and program uh, in that materiality topic is there in that also this is this we clearly come anyhow so this is completely there in the sa 320 this is also a straight away pronouncements question getting it only those who read from pronouncement can clear otherwise it's difficult extremely or this might have been tested somewhere in the rtp long back or MTP long back, maybe from that it might be pulled. But I'm telling you what I follow, the approach what I follow, it's not how many RTPs, how many MTPs. You read main syllabus correctly, definitely you'll do well. If at all you focus on 10 RTPs, 15 RTPs, suppose you, you decided to read 10 RTPs or let us assume you decided to read past 6 RTPs, which is really good number. But ask, one of the question was asked from May 2018. Okay, now you stretch yourself to past 8 RTPs or 10 RTPs. What if the question comes from 2016 RTP or 2015 RTP? So you can't sit and study past, entire in the past 20 years, 40 RTPs would have released, right? You can't sit and study 40 RTPs, right? What is the best way? Please read full syllabus, if at all you are reading. Whatever chapter you are selecting, read fully. Whatever standard you are selecting, read fully. Don't filter the content. That's why whenever I'm suggesting videos, whenever I'm suggesting to the student, I will not, I will not ask them to split A category, B category, C category within the chapter. I will tell the student to ignore 5 chapters, it's okay. But remaining 10 chapters, be perfect. Even if you ignore 5 chapters, it's okay. But remaining 10 chapters, be strong. This is what I always tell people. Because this is very safe strategy. Next. Now, the next one is, this is 2A, then the next one is 2B. This is regarding what are five aspects which are given in notes to separate financials, nothing but standalones, sorry, separate financials of the parent and subsidiaries, but will not be included in consolidated. What points we exclusively given standalone? What points we will not keep it in consolidated? It's a straight of a straight question, ma. It's a very straight question, not so difficult. It's there in our book as well. Disclosures in SFS, but not in TFS. So these are the disclosures. So these points you have to give. So if the question is for five marks, you have to write five points at least. That's it. Five points enough at least. There are totally eight points, but any five points it is enough. Next, it's a straight question, and mostly every CA final student FR they prepare consolidation in depth. So this point you might be covering it in FR in depth already. So even if you don't read CFS SFS audit. That, that chapter audit of CFS you will be able to read this next what are the differences between forensic audit and other audits a straight question what is difference between normal audit and forensic audit a normal audit opinion involves in forensic audit opinion is not the choice it's about subject matter something like that okay so it's a straight question I'm not showing what is difference between forensic audit and the other audits very straight question in fact it is starting one or second question in the forensic audit chapter next here they are asking, you see this is the question actually, what they are asking, advise the statutory auditors the areas in which direct assistance cannot be taken. Also comment in the section whether stat auditor can take internal auditor's assistance. It's SA 610, in module 1 we have, uh, it's a side question, in fact we spend so much time, if at all you are a regular student you might have understood already, we spend so much time on this, discussing. I, I took GST example, I took audit team when suddenly two people sick, okay, so uh, audit team is having shortage of manpower and client also wants us to complete the audit within targeted time, so what we do, we take help of the client, we ask client please give two personal direct assistance, so what points you will consider, areas where direct assistance cannot be used, this point, this point is tested. And what are the factors that you will consider whether to go for direct assistance or not? This answer. If you write this answer, getting it, evaluation process 1A. And if you write this answer, both, you will get 5 out of 5. A straight question. Okay. Which we discussed in our class very much. Next one. This is about, as soon as you see, I mean, here, here if you see, CAM is commencing uh, statutory audit of limited entity where they are trading in software products. He is evaluating control environment and noted that 
internal controls are functioning in an automated environment they are functioning what are the five points for consideration when auditing in automated environment with respect to audit approach during planning execution completion phase this is a straight question in automated environment in our book it is second question actually uh, the page number is 631 631 it's the fourth question in our book See here so what are the phases that are comprising in planning execution completion in an automated environment what auditor will consider so in this any five points you have to write totally seven were given you have to write any five and alternative answer you can write this part one two three four also part one two three four let's understand what activities auditor consider in automated environment this is alternative answer okay both you have both both the both of these you can write but this is complicated according to me because student will not be giving that much in-depth attention to it then this is regarding chapter file council guidelines every chartered accountant in practice shall maintain books of accounts right okay under income tax 44 ada section you may be exempted but as per ICA council guidelines you have to maintain so that question has been tested so here the ca in practice did not maintain books of accounts so he is guilty because he violating council guidelines next you have been appointed as an auditor for a nationalized bank they will give credit card facilities stride question i think evaluate internal control system in the credit card area how will you evaluate it's a credit card operations any five points you have to write credit card operation i think we discussed that in our classroom especially our regular students next briefly explains five principles which are need to be complied fundamental principles the ca inter first chapter first question integrity objectivity independence yes or no um, confidentiality professional competence and due care that's it it's a straight question next and now here they are asking while evaluating risks and control at an entity level the auditor should take cognizance of prevalent direct controls and indirect ELCs it's actually a question of ELCs entity level controls there are two types of ELCs direct ELC indirect ELC what are the examples it's again an automated environment question till day till now in automated environment there are totally nine, you know nine marks which is asked which is asked you see here you will find uh, entity level controls where is the page number 638 here what are the examples direct elc this answer you have to write this answer you have to write examples direct elc is we have given two examples indirect elc is we have given three examples this answer you have to write this is also actually a little tough question according to me because i don't know how many students have stud studied this in depth next that's why automated environment is always a first category chapter because it's it's easy very small chapter though the terminology is very difficult it's small chapter if you put little efforts five marks you can easily score this attempt number 22 nine marks question was nine marks came from automated environment now here they are asking about okay woman obtained certain evidence of incorrect disclosure of related party transactions which uh, I mean, which was not considered with affirmation leading to misstatements. Uh, related party disclosures, misstatement was made in the financials. Okay. Discuss how Uma deal with the situation in the audit report and different options which he can be considering. Related party disclosures completely incorrectly shown. Reporting requirement they are asking. Auditor will give as, as per SA 705 modified opinion. If auditor identified sufficient, if the auditor obtained sufficient appropriate evidence and concluded that the uh, financial statements are containing statements then depending upon the pervasiveness the auditor will either give a qualified opinion or adverse opinion further related party relationship caro clause number 13 you have to clause number 13 you have to mention because in clause number 13 caro reporting requirement whether related party transactions are conducted in compliance with 177 188 second point whether the financial statements are giving proper disclosure in related party there you need to qualify this these two points if you write five marks will be getting for sure next then this is also again a caro question this time in this time from caro close to 10 marks came now you see here you are appointed as an auditor for one private limited company after resignation of rs and co chartered accountants as stat auditors okay and all the compliances are done properly 
During the course, you came to notice that a survey has been conducted by income tax department and department identified, unearthed means identified unrecorded sales of 5 lakhs which has made in cash on different dates during 2021. XMP has purchased gold from such a collection and these transactions are not recorded. Company surrendered and disclosed these transactions before assessing officer and paid taxes also. However, company did not record those transactions. It's a clause 8 which is newly added clause in CARO 2020. And they are also asking about clause 18, resignation. <coughs> Sorry. So here auditor resigned and you took up the position. Now in your audit report in CARO, you need to report whether during the year any resignation happened. If so, whether the formalities complied. Have you considered the points for resignation? That you need to check. And clause number 8. Whether, whether any search seizure was conducted under income tax law, if any amount is which is not disclosed earlier was disclosed now, whether the same is recorded in the books of accounts of the company, if not, give the details. So it's a caro clause 8 question, clause 18 question, it's a strike question, not big deal. I, I even covered this point in audit uh, marathon CA panel. If you check out audit marathon CA panel, caro 2020, this is there. Next. And not, not a big deal. This is a tight question because everybody reads Caro for sure. So it's a very easy question. Five marks question. Next one. What are the factors you will consider in assessing future maintainable sales of TP Limited? This has been asked many times. In our book also, it's a straight practical question. It's a straight practical question. 494 page. You see this answer you have to write. In assessing turnover, it's actually due diligence chapter. So what are the points you will take into account to check future maintainable turnover, future maintainable sales? These are the points you will consider. It's easy question. Now here, what is a core investment company under Reserve Bank regulations? What are the reporting requirements under CARO? Reporting requirement under CARO clause 16 C, we will anyhow read in CARO. Whether this company fulfilling the criteria of core investment company? If so, I mean, if fulfilling or not, second one, how many companies are there within the group that are also considered as core investment companies? So that 16C, three points whether you have to write that. Now, additionally, what they're asking is, what is a core investment company? When I'm explaining NBFC audit, I clearly explain to all our regular students, core investment company is a company where more than or equal to 90% of net assets were invested in group company shares and securities. That is called as a core investment company. I even told in NBFC audit chapter, systematically important core investment, non-systematically important, non-systematically important, systematically important, more than 100 crores, non-systematically less than. That systematic point is not required. Definition of core investment company, they ask. Actually, this is there in guidance note on CARO. Guidance note on CARO 2020. But who will read guidance note? Which final student reads guidance for main material itself, they are unable to read. Out of that itself, they are filtering the content. So out of 5 marks, CARO requirement might carry 3 marks to 4 marks. I think so. 3 to 4. 1 mark might be given for core investment company definition, which is not there anywhere in the ICICA final booklet at all. It is there in the guidance note or you can search in RBA regulations. You will find it. So this is one I can say out of syllabus question. Logically, based on the book given by the institute. Next. Here, the story is very simple. Peer reviewer has conducted peer review. First, you need to prepare a preliminary report, right? Before giving final report to the peer review board, first he has to give the preliminary report to the firm and get the observations. Then he has to prepare final report. But what he did, you know, he straight away submitted the report to peer review board without giving preliminary report to the firm. So you need to write that point reporting by peer reviewer so you need to write reporting requirement after on-site visit the peer reviewer shall prepare a peer review report and before submitting to the peer review board first it has to be sent to the audit firm practicing unit and get the reply of the practicing unit if the reply is satisfactory fine if the reply is not satisfactory prepare a modified opinion and prepare final report and then submit to the peer review board write this answer now Analysis and conclusion. In the given case, peer reviewer has tried to have submitted the review report to the peer review board without giving it to the firm at first. And hence, it's not a, it's a violation of peer review rules. That's it. Next, uh, this is regarding audit program topic. 
what are the circumstances where audit program will be altered by auditor what are the circumstances straight question again it's a straight question where and all audit program will be altered circumstances where audit program would have to be altered four points were given but if you write four out of four they asked for four all the four points you have to write and last question is here one practicing say you know generally from professional ethics we expect 12 to 14 marks that too from the clauses but only one clause is tested clause two part one schedule only that is tested fundamental principles five marks question is tested so this time from professional ethics only nine marks came from standard close to 25 marks came 25 or even 30 i don't know maybe mcqs i have not seen right maybe five or ten marks might be there in mcq so who knows so and i think even professional ethics also mcqs might have come i'm not sure exactly so this is regarding the ca final paper november 2022 as a whole what i felt is except one and two questions except one and two um remaining all other questions i felt it is bit comfortable i felt it is bit comfortable you know what i felt complicated you know what i felt complicated i mean from student point of view i'm thinking and telling you first question i felt complicated five marks because student will not be reading at this level even second question also is complicated those who attended my classes especially sa 320 those who watched the entire pronouncement that video which i made only those who those can actually answer if at all they studied once again after the class otherwise it is difficult so this one 10 marks and even yeah this one 2a 1b and 1a so totally 15 marks here until here 15 and uh, here automated environment no that five points which you need to write that is also complicated it's not easy it's complicated because many students will not pay that much in-depth attention next um here related party transactions many will be writing essay 550 content some students but here what you have to write is essay 705 content mainly and caro related content i don't know how many wrote this caro point i'm not sure exactly so here 20 then we have uh, that's it around 20 marks i felt it is complicated from student point of view rest all other okay chalte hai. You, can, you can manage not a big deal okay thank you have a nice time so be prepared for any sort of paper it's not how many rtps how many question banks you did getting it it's all about how much clarity you're having on the question which is asked and whatever how much grip you are having on the content you read only those who understand the content thoroughly logically they can only correlate with the questions exactly asked and write the correct answer otherwise you will misinterpret the question and write some other answer so have a nice time carry on